All right, so just to give some perspective, um, I come from a family of, of cheapskates. And, and you're probably thinking to yourself, oh God, why is she saying that? Well, um, you know, you think, you're probably thinking to yourself, well, they're frugal, they, they stretch a dollar. Yeah, but that's not really what it is. They're, they're skin flints, they're cheapskates. One of the things that my grandmother and my mother always said to me was waste not, want not. If I heard that one time, I heard it a million times. You know, I heard it a zillion times. You couple this with the fact that I come from a military family. Now, my dad was Air Force, my mom was a teacher, and there were five siblings. A military family doesn't get paid a bunch, so you kind of have to be non-wasters. My mother uh, was famous for her Thursday soup. Now, Thursday soup was made out of leftovers from Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Most of the time, it really didn't work so well. So <laughs> the side benefit of Thursday's just god-awful soup was that Friday's fish sticks tasted awesome. <laughs> So scroll forward a few years. Um, the, I lived through the soup. I'm probably never going to get cancer because of the uh, effects of that soup. Most of my siblings went into the military. I did not. I also opted out of med school. You can imagine how well those decisions went over with my family. But be that as may, I spent uh, the first two and a half years of my life in pharmaceuticals as a pharmaceutical sales rep, as a matter of fact. And one of the things I did in my everyday life was I ran around and I gave a lot of drug samples, you know, those little boxes of drugs you get free at the doctor's office. I gave them out by the millions. That was the first two and a half years of my career. The next 10 years of my career were spent in online sampling, where I was innovating from that end of things. Online sampling, for those of you who are not aware of it, is kind of taking the place of a pharmaceutical rep. It's allowing doctors and healthcare professionals to order online as opposed to getting it from a rep. That's when I really started realizing how much waste was going on in online and, and regular sampling. So waste to the tune of $2 billion, that's billion with a B, by the way, about a third of the samples actually go to waste. So just to get a little bit of perspective, you could buy the Chicago Cubs and a SmackDown resort in Dubai every year with the amount of money we waste. Now, my grandma would have very hard words for the people who waste that kind of money, let me just tell you. Scroll forward a few more years. I moved my family from New York with my company to Connecticut, and we were at a brunch and Easter party at a neighbor's house. And my neighbor, uh, who was a former speechwriter for Jimmy Carter, a Harvard guy, super nice guy, starts talking to me and saying, hey, Janet, glad you're here. What is it you do for a living? And I said, well, you know, I run a marketing and PR agency, and we have an arm in the healthcare arena. And he said, oh, that's amazing. How, how proud your family must be of you. And uh, yeah, what, what is it you do, Janet, to actually help people? Uh, ouch. Um, geez, I don't know, Jerry. I, I, I don't know. I, I just go to work, man. What do you want from me? So, so <laughs> he denies saying that. He still, well, I asked my Jerry, man, do you remember saying that? Yeah, Janet, I don't know what you're talking about. That's not true. He said it. And you know what? That question, I think it changed the course of my life. I st I'm still busting his chops about it to this day, and I can't wait to show him this because he's going to die. This question kept going around in my head. My God, what am I going to do to help people? Because clearly my neighbor doesn't think I am. Other people must think the same thing. So that idea gels in your head and you think about it more and more. And then things start happening to kind of pull those pieces together. So neighbors started coming over. And what they did was they banged on the door and they said, hey, I can't afford my prescription medicines. Hey, I can't, I can't pay for my health insurance. What should I do? So, okay, I would listen to them and I'd try to figure something out to kind of craft an idea on how to help them. Uh, I was driving back from AstraZeneca one time, very long drive listened to an NPR show, and it was all about veterans. And it took two years as an average for a veteran to get access to medicines or health care. Veterans, really? So I called my dad, and I'm like, that can't be possible. How is this true? And he goes, no, no, that's not the truth. And then I dug into it. It is true. So I'm looking at that. And then I already knew about two billion in waste in samples. OK, so then I found out a little bit more. I found out that not only are there $2 billion wasted in pharmaceutical samples, there's also the hospitals, the clinics, the long-term care facilities that have packaged drugs, prescription drugs. And when the patient passes away or is, you know, leaves the facility, those drugs are thrown away. Thrown away, whole packages of them, thrown away into the dumpster. So now, when you add it all up, we're talking about $5 billion in pharmaceutical waste. Good drugs. that that could be used. Now, on the other hand of things, you have medical need, medications need. 
and there are 50 million Americans who can't fill their prescriptions. Okay, so let's just take a look at this. And you can see the wheel spinning in my head. I got five billion of medical waste and I got 50 million Americans who can't afford it. Hmm. Aha, that was my aha moment. I said, you know what, if I can fix pharmaceutical waste and I can give people medicines, that's Jerry Doolittle, how I can help people. <laughs> and that's where the whole concept for Pharmacy Cares came about. And in 2014, we were approved as a 501c3 with that very core idea. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> it was a big idea. Hey, thank Jerry, he started this. So let's just take a look at this. I mean, when you look at the magnitude of medication waste, where does this all come from? Well, part of it is oversampling. So when you go into any doctor's office in the United States, any city, pick a city, open their sample closet, stuff to the brim with samples, and a lot of that stuff expires. So when it expires, they haul it out back and they chuck it in the dumpster, and that's what happens to it. So nobody can use that medication. There's overprescribing. Americans love their drugs. I won't go into all that commentary, but the bottom line is half of us take at least one prescription drug a day, half. Now, if you look at one in four kids, nine out of 10 adults over 65, they're all taking one drug a day, at least. 40% of Americans take five or more drugs a day. Five or more drugs a day, that that's gets ludicrous. Now, there's been take back programs and recycling programs in different states, and they're they're kind of drops in the buckets because when you look at the amount of waste, 250 million pounds of waste being generated every year in the U.S., every year, just starting a take-back program when you get 75,000 pounds of drugs, even over two years, that doesn't solve the problem. That's a very small percentage. So we really need to get an overarching national program that can get rid of that waste and give it into the hands of people who can't afford those medicines. So let's talk about a little bit of that unaffordability. One in four Americans cannot afford to fill a prescription drug. Working Americans, one in four working Americans, can't fill a prescription drug. That's crazy. Now, Americans rarely agree on anything, but they do agree. 76% of us say that being able to afford our drugs, especially for chronic conditions, is really important. And we can already see that in the elections coming up, this is going to be a key thing because Hillary Clinton is already starting to make public comment about prescription drug affordability. So what can we do? I sit here and I tell you all the problems of the world, you know, millions of pounds of this and millions of people needing that. Well, if you're a physician or a healthcare professional, you can actually use those drugs in your closet. Open it up and give it away because that's why it's there. So, you know, like instead of letting those things expire, use them. Now, if they get close to expiration, what you want to do is you want to call a nonprofit or you want to call a clinic and you can donate those samples. And we're actually partnering with companies who do just that. So those samples can be used. Once they expire, a little bit of a different kettle of fish. Now, pharmaceutical companies need to plan in advance. So they have overstocked, they have short dated product. That can all be donated. And there are, again, programs to handle that kind of medication and can get it into the hands of people who need it. We need to educate. Physicians don't necessarily know past throwing at the dumpster what to do. That's an education program because there are responsible ways to, first of all, get it donated. That's what you want to do. But if you can't, then you need to find ways to dispose of it so it's responsibly dealt with. And then it's educating consumers because if they don't know better, they're going to flush it in the toilet or they're going to you know, throw it in their dumpster as well. Learning proper methods of disposal so that instead of burning it or throwing it out in the trash, which affects our land, our water, and our air, and that all comes back to us people, it's not just disappearing into nowhere. It's going to affect us. So one of my favorite people ever to quote is Gandhi. So you must be the change to wish to s you wish to see in the world. And the change I wish to see in the world is that we eliminate that pharmaceutical waste and we deal with the problem of want on the medication side because those two problems can solve each other to a large extent. So what am I asking you to do? I'm asking you to take action. So go to pharmacares.org slash be the change. Put your ideas up. If you have successes, something that's working for you, be, uh, if you're a physician or a pharma person or just a person out here that's concerned, write down what you're going to do. Take action. Start a conversation and choose to be the change. Thank you.